and create a second part. So this is going to be block 2. Now it's going to ask me where do I want to create block 2. Well again I can pick anywhere in space as, as I choose for block 2 but I always like to start with a plan view and if I wanted to I could actually pick a surface on the object and make block 2 relational by a, a flush constraint. We'll deal with constraints here um, assembly constraints in a few minutes but I can actually make it relational if I pick a surface of the original part that it knows where to start from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick front and I'm just going to pick a point a little bit off to the right here and we're going to create a second part. Now block one is still here in our assembly but it's not part of our second part. So the second part, I'm going to go ahead and begin by the line command. Again, this time I'm going to start with the 0, 0, and you'll notice that I will not have to put the fixed point in. Okay. So I've got the general constraint of the block, general shape. I need to put in the 0.75 here. And the overall distance is going to be 1.5. And the overall height will be 1 1.5. And I think that is good. I got ooh, one more dimension needed. Which one's not dimensioned? This one right here. So it needs to know that this is 0.75. Now what happens if you mess up and don't dimension that? Well then when you go to assemble your, your components together, they won't fit. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this sketch and extrude it 0.75 out. But we're not done with this one. This one I need to create another block that actually sticks out the back. And so what happens is, is if I'm creating a three-dimensional component here, I need to create another sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the surface by left mouse clicking. And it's going to allow me to create a brand new sketch on that surface. I'm going to use the rectangle command this time. Why the rectangle? because I already have a starting point up here in the top corner and an ending point here where the block comes together and it allows me to create a perfect square that I don't need to constrain. Notice that it's fully blue. I can finish the sketch, extrude it, and this time we're going to extrude that surface 0.75 and choose OK. So now I've created a block that has an extra protrusion. And I can go ahead and do this on any surface that I choose to. If I wanted to create another block coming out of the top, I could do that. I can create a block coming off to the side here. And again, to do that, you left mouse click, create a new sketch. Since it's already highlighted, and I know that I can create a perfect square, I can just select the surfaces, extrude, and then I have to select what surface I plan on extruding and choose OK. So I have now just created a very unique shape. And this particular block we're going to make blue. And I'll hit save. And we'll choose return. So I've got a blue block and a red block. Now this block happens, if you notice on the browser window here, and whenever we change or edit, we always use the browser tool, you'll notice that I've got a push pin through that. And what that indicates is that this block is fixed in space. It will not move. This block will move in space. So I can grab it by a left mouse click, hold my mouse button down, and I can move it. This block, notice that it's grounded. It will not move. 
so now I need to take and constrain assembly watts this block the blue block to the red block and you'll notice that I still have the the place and create we're gonna choose the constrain we also have the assemble options which allows us um, some additional features uh, with assembling components. But I'm going to go ahead and choose the basic constraint option here so that way you can see how the constraint will work. The constraint is a little bit more difficult than the assemble. Okay, that's the only, that's the major difference. They both do the same thing. Under constraint, I'm going to use what is known, and there's four different types. There's a mate, an angle, a tangent, and an insert people overuse the insert constraint. Think of an insert as a bolt going through a hole or a pin going through the shaft, a cotter pin going through the shaft to hold it on the end. Those kind of things. When we do mate, we're dealing with flat surfaces. Whether it's a surface or an edge or a point, I can use the mate tool tangent and excuse me angle allows me to set objects at a specific angle associated with it and tangent allows me to put objects tangent to each other we also have some tabs across the top dealing with motion and so if you're gonna have a rack and pinion or to spur gears meet you would use the motion constraints so that way the gears would mesh transitional this allows you to put a, uh, a tangent to multiple surfaces and then constraint set we're going to avoid that in the uh, entry level class it's just a little bit more difficult to use so we're going to focus primarily on assembly and some motion constraints as we get into some more advanced assemblies so it takes three constraints to hold the position there's actually six degrees of freedom that we have on a part. We need to hold three or half of those degrees of freedom before the part will stop moving. To do this it's going to take three constraints. The first constraint that I am going to apply is going to be a mate constraint and it's going to mate two surfaces. So I'm going to tell, that, tell the, the computer that this surface and this surface are going to mate up. Now there's two different colors. You see that there's a blue and a red. And you'll notice that the part is mated, or blue and a red, blue and a green, sorry. And the blue, I shouldn't have picked the blue, I should have picked the blue and the red part so that would show up a little bit better. But you can see that the blue and the green are now touching together. And that's my first constraint. I'll choose apply. The second constraint that I want to do and all I did here is take that block, hold my left mouse button down, and rotate it. So, but you can see that the blue block is not aligned perfectly with the red block. But I can do that with the mate command in flush, if I flush two surfaces together. So I want the bottom of the red to be flush with the bottom of the blue. So you can see that the blue surface and the green surface are now flush and it's looking much better. It's still not perfect yet because you can still see that there's an edge here that it, things are not fully aligned. Okay, so you can see how things are not aligned. My third one is I'm going to apply a flush constraint on this surface and this surface and that all that does is make the two surfaces align themselves and now the three, comp or the three surfaces have been constrained after I choose apply and okay so now we've got and I'm going to choose cancel because we're done with the basic constraint here but now it's a single object it's been constrained notice that the blue block will not move anymore and then I'm able to rotate it and it stays a consistent object if I rotate this and it doesn't stay consistent then I know it's not fully constrained if I see red edges poking out, 
if I see that edges are not perfectly aligned and square, if I look at the front view and I look at the right side view, opposite, looked at the right and then the front, and things are not square, then they're not aligned. So at this point we now have created our assembly. Our next video is going to take this and take it to the drawing portion, so what the steps are after this that you're going to need to create.